You sick of hearing about this? Yeah, me too. But when I realized coronavirus will directly affect our community, I had to make a video about it. So today, I'm gonna teach you all my tips and tricks on how to avoid the coronavirus. It's currently March 10th, 2020. Unless you've been living under a rock, you already know what coronavirus is. And just because coronavirus is primarily the topic of this video, doesn't mean that these aren't completely applicable to things like the flu and personal hygiene as a wheelchair user. Let's start with some basics. Wash your hands frequently. You want hot water, you want soap, and you want to scrub for 20 seconds. You can sing happy birthday to yourself twice, and that's a little hack you can do to know what 20 seconds is. I personally like using a foam antibacterial soap and I lather it up real nice in between the front of my hands and the back of my hands and in between the fingers of my hands. Um, as the water is continuing to get warmer, I'm still scrubbing. I go all the way up to my wrists on both sides. I'll sing happy birthday to myself twice and that's a good way to know that I've been under the water for 20 seconds. I also think it's important to dry off with a paper towel and not a regular towel that gets used over and over again because the virus itself can actually still live on your hand after the soap is there. So by wiping your hands away, you're also wiping the rest of the dirt and gunk away. And if you're one of my quad friends, here's a technique you can use. So similar from the very beginning, we scrub the front and the back. Um, what makes this more quad specific is with limited dexterity, it's difficult to get in between our fingers. So what we'll do is we will use our wrist and put the wrist in between our fingers so we can scrub in between our fingers right where that webbing is using our wrist. I've been using public restrooms and let me tell you, this might be a little bit elementary, but I've seen the way you guys wash your hands and you definitely need to know this. If you have the option to wash your hands over sanitizer, take that route. Hot water and soap is the only way to take it completely off your hands. Keeping your fingernails short is another way to reduce the amount of bacteria and potential places for viruses to hide on your hands. As a wheelchair user, we're pushing our wheelchair around all day, which means our hands are coming into contact with our tires and our push rims. So make sure that you are very thorough when washing your hands. Don't touch your face or any mucous membranes as a matter of fact. That includes rubbing your eyes, picking your nose, capping, bowel program, stomas, feeding tubes, and ventilators. If you're unable to cough or sweat, this can be extremely dangerous for you. Don't take this lightly. Smoking also increases this risk, so use your plant medicine wisely. Get a flu shot. We already have the odds stacked against us, so we don't need to be dealing with the flu and the coronavirus at the exact same time. Currently, the flu is actually more deadly than the coronavirus is right now. If you do get the flu, your chances of getting the coronavirus is actually higher because your body will be so focused on preventing the flu and creating all the antibodies to fight that, that the coronavirus can just slip right in, making things even worse. Don't touch the tire. Your wheelchair wheels have a push rim and a tire for a reason touch the push rim only. If you're touching the tire, that's the equivalent of touching the bottom of your shoes. Gross. Make sure you disinfect your push rims after being in public. Keep a safe distance. If you're out in public and you see someone coughing, stay at a minimum of six feet away from them. If you know someone who's sick, don't hang out with them. Don't go to their house, stay away. I'm not saying completely pause the rest of your life, but it's not worth the risk. You don't want this to evolve into more complications and more challenges because as we know, we already have enough already. Disinfect your phone often. A lot of people don't know this, but phones are actually dirtier than escalator handrails and toilet seats. Ugh. Think about it. It's touching up against your face. It's all over your hands. You're sitting on the ground, on the floor, Everywhere, that's just disgusting, your phone goes. So now that you know that, disinfect your phone as much as possible. Let's talk masks. I think masks should only be worn by people that are currently experiencing symptoms. Wearing a mask as a preventative measure is actually taking away masks from medical professionals that actually need them to keep themselves safe while treating other patients. There's currently a shortage right now of masks, which is just crazy if you actually think about it. And I would hate to be a medical professional and having to deal with sick patients without masks. So unless you're coughing, have a fever, and have shortness of breath, I would not recommend wearing a mask. 
Plus, masks have their flaws too. It can give you a false sense of security, and if they're wet, they are basically useless. So if you cough into them a couple of times, you might as well not even be wearing one. Speaking of coughs, we still cough and sneeze even when we're not sick. So have some etiquette. If you're gonna cough or sneeze, cough into your hand or into your elbow or even better, into a tissue and dispose of that tissue. Cough etiquette is a great way to prevent community spread. And if you do cough or sneeze into your hands, be sure to wash it with hot soap and water right after. Is there currently any treatment for coronavirus? No, preventative measures and supportive care is the only line of treatment at the moment. Something to consider specifically involving spinal cord injury is if you're a person who's had recurring UTIs over the history of your injury, you might actually have some antibiotic resistant bacteria living in your system. In the future, there might be some antivirals and antibiotics created to prevent coronavirus. And if you are already in a situation where you have super bugs in your system, these treatments might not be effective. So this is definitely something to heavily consider when it comes to prevention. Even if you're not a wheelchair user and have a very strong immune system, practicing all of these is a great way to help the community at large. Because if you don't get sick, then the people around you won't get sick and they won't be spreading it on to other people. Another very important thing to consider is caretakers. If you have people coming into your home to take care of you, more than likely you're a high level of injury, which means you're quadriplegic and you have a very difficult time coughing and managing your temperature, so inability to sweat, or you might even be on ventilator care. It is not rude or disrespectful to have people wash their hands the moment they come in your house. You can say, hey, what's going on? Hi, hello please wash your hands. If they don't know how to wash their hands, you can show them this video, but it's very important to protect yourself at all costs, especially if they're gonna be helping you with your daily routines and getting involved in your mucous membranes. One of the things that's been bothering me the most about coronavirus at the moment is how blown out of proportion it is in the media and how over sensationalized it is. If you're under 55, there's like a 2% death rate. When you go over 55, it jumps to 8%, 15%, and even 38% every 10 years. But if you're a young, healthy person or you're an active person, it's not as horrible and as terrifying and scary as they make you wanna believe. 80% of the cases have been very mild and totally manageable with supportive care. So it's definitely important to not buy into all this insane fear and complete chaos that's happening right now. I mean, they're doing it to get clicks and to get ratings and there's a lot of um, incorrect scientific information out there and I'm gonna do my best to link down below things from the CDC, WHO, FDA, and even some other content creators here on YouTube that I admire a lot. If we do the next right thing and follow these suggestions that I've given you, then you're gonna be able to prevent the coronavirus for yourself and for the community at large. I am just so excited to finally be back. For those of you guys who've been paying close attention to my journey and watching the podcast, you know how insane the past couple of months have been. And finally, you know, I, I just felt like I was reaching the point where I needed to make a video because um, I was falling so out of the loop of everything. And this particular topic is just so important to me because I understand it has the potential to be very risky to a lot of us in this community. And the last thing I wanna see is a lot of people dying unnecessarily when we can take steps to prevent this. Um, if you have been missing me in my videos, don't worry, we're gonna continue moving forward. We also have merch coming out very, very, very soon, which is super exciting because Andrew and I have been working so hard on this and we're so stoked about it. Um, if you want to keep up with us every week, more than just the videos, we also have a second channel. It's a, it's a podcast channel where Andrew and I sit down and talk about wheelchair stuff. And even more importantly, we talk about non-wheelchair stuff too. We want this to be basically for everyone, even if you're not a wheelchair user. So come along, come check it out. I'm going to be sure to link everything in the description. And thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.